Major. Before the lockdown locked us down, we do see Starlet of Berlin Major 2019 a head to head. Of course, a new organization, Virtus Pro, now representing what was the Avangar boys. And we do see them start on the T side, Chad. Yeah, well, Astralis here, they are yet to play overpass in this tournament. So let's see what they've got in store for us. Dupree aggressively over towards the fountain area, spots up one, chips Buster down. Zonic's got a stack of notes on his desk. He's pulled out the golden overpass card. Yeah, and there's a lot to look into as well. VP have played this map four times through the planes. They've won it three. The only time they lost it was to NIP. Ooh. That was with Plopsky having that monstrous performance. What was that, like 37 or something? Something uh, absolutely It was close wild. to 40. Yeah. Okay. Look at all these nades on the CT side here. Just to note this, Astralis have opted to go with almost two full sets of nades. No defuse kit on the pistol. Okay. Two smokes, three flashes, a HE, and well, there's... Zipex taking a bit of contact early. He has to drop back. Surely he has to drop back. Can you contest? Certainly not successfully. Sanji's in, or was, knocked out. Quick response. Buster shuts it down. P250 on him, as well as that Kevlar vest. All right, 3v3s. Plenty of smoke on Glaive. Trying to get the bomb down. James, squeaky bomb time, but punching in the digits. Oh, Important damage. damage. Kick it might want to have a bit more of a conservative approach now. Time's ticking in favor of VP. On the retake is the two armored CTs. And Glaive. Dupree on the ramp, opened up nicely by the leader. Jane responds and plucks off oh, the head and a second head as well. Dupree responds in kind. It's through the box though, needs a second, okay. does find it. Running out of time. It's a time sensitive mission. Buster just plays this to perfection. What's he got? Pulls the pin, tries to fake it out. Buster's being just safe enough. And there's no time for this one. It's a VP pistol. Yeah, Dupree's gonna just hang around here, see if he can get the 300 with the kill. Otherwise, hold on to this Kevlar, but Buster doesn't want any of it. Both will survive. Doesn't get closer than that, though. Chad, a 1v1 on the retake. Yeah, that one there, the, all the nades that Astralis had vested on the pistol, that's a little bit unusual for the CT side. You might normally see one player going for a kit and maybe some nades on the side of that, but neither with the diffuse kit right there. And a good start from VP to kick things off. Now, to note with Jame, he is uh, the highest rated player for VP as far as uh, overpass goes. So that's a great start from him here. And it's crazy to think as well with that exchange, if he'd have dropped left into the site and been able to get that fake and pressure on Buster sooner, that was a way back in. Just that minor decision to drop back into the water and the death cam communications just let, meant Buster didn't have to get too scared too quick. Maybe they should be scared about this though. Yeah, big stack on the B bomb site right here in the early stages. That's a flub smoke. So just a missed throw here early. Remember the pressure situation for somebody like your kinder. This is the online environment. He's going to be able to uh, keep those nerves better than if it was LAN, but he has been a huge contributor for VP. So we'll keep our eyes on him. They're making no secret of his presence just by the boost on sandbags. Clay very loud as he stampedes over the wooden floorboards and some long space being taken. Buster the spearhead of that operation doesn't want to do too much more. A smoke monster, minimal resources for Astralis. A single smoke remaining on Glaive. He'll be able to re-smoke monster should he desire. Yeah, note this scout on device, which is over towards A right now. So if he gets any tags, which none seem like it's going to be offered up anytime soon, then we could be into a couple of dramas as far as VP fans go. But yep, they're coming back. Yeah, and the utility at this stage, Alex, only is one smoke, a handful of flashes, and a molly. So this is going to come down to the trades. The Deagles have almost leveled the playing field here. Is Glaive in a position to smoke off Monster? He's close. Yeah, just towards the pillar. This 40 seconds. Okay, he does get it out in time. That might delay these. Execute. That will mean that they're going to be super fine margins for this take. 20 seconds or less. I have to go sandbag. So four of them going through sandbag. One late monster. Yikes. That's going to be kick it with the AK. If he gets this HE on their nose, Glaive's still got one. They're all coming up short. Could be spicy. In we go. 25. Yakinda. Fine first frag. And a second as well. Make it three. Locked out of the site now. Magis would need a hero moment with his Desert Eagle. He does spot a glimmer of a head, but won't be able to find any connection. Oh. He does not kick it down. Device in a one versus two. Odd stacked against him as the seconds oh, kick away it straight into Sanji and it looks like it was good for a second. Just about finding the safe angle away from that. Trying to fake the drop sound, get bait a peek out of your kinder. He's not giving him anything. Oh, device, every shot looks like it's bang on the, the uh, head there. May as well hold on to this one. No real way back in. Seeing if we grab oh. Sanji on the way out the door. Good tag onto your kinder. Nobody wants to give up here. So damage is all that device is looking for right now and uh, VP have had enough. They're gonna back on out. They get the second round. 
Save the AKs as well. It couldn't have gone better for him. Yeah, I, just a quick one. Megas with a couple of nice shots there. And in 2021, his stat hasn't been great for the team, right? He's been having a, a couple of rough games. And if he's been spending a lot more time in the deathmatch and we get the Megas that we know and love, this one could be on because the last game we saw Astralis play was the 16-1, right? That's going to stick in the back of their minds. There's no two ways around that. This is a team of Astralis' caliber. If you lose a game in that fashion, that's going to motivate and fire this team up. <laughs> just as you say that, I'm looking at that zero. If it stays that zero for much longer, you that's when they second guess. That's when they start thinking about it again. For now, 2-0, the, the, the woes are minimal. This will be the preserved scout and a very early tag. That's what you're looking for when you've only got a single bit of firepower in the hands of Device. He's going to be looking to be very proactive here, searching to snipe and whittle away at those VP health bars before they get too close to sight. Yeah, and Megas has that deagle. So this one still could get a little bit deadly. But it's going to depend on how VP want to operate. Last round, they didn't take any contact with that scout and still rotated straight back towards the B bomb site. This time, very thorough on that connectically. You can see one molly thrown from down the bottom, another from up the top, flushing the forward all back into the lines of sight. You can really see the thought process as well, especially on a buy like this, you know, expecting them to perhaps stack up an underpass. It's very thorough, as you said. Regrouping towards B, and it does look like Astralis are going to be getting some info early, which is pretty solid call. Device was detached. Last seen fountain. Looks like he might be there in time. Good call on the stack here. So they're gambling towards the B bomb site right here, Astralis. Oh, another missed smoke, is it? Into the site, and with plenty of space to stretch their legs, there's four members of VP flooding in, and Magic Steagle has managed to fill the feed, albeit short lived. Just the USPs now, just a bit of housekeeping. And there we have it. So a third for Virtus Pro starting off their map pick with a bang. And wobbles, right? We saw two missed smokes within the first three rounds. That's just the little details. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. It happens a lot. Teams will uh, miss a smoke or a nade here, there, and everywhere. But the pressure of a quarterfinal, especially, especially at IM Katowice, might be weighing on the minds of some of the VP players. And the buy is coming through. You kinder onto that AK-47. And, well, it's five AK-47s across the board. Jame not operating with an AWP on round number four. Meanwhile, Device, his adversary, has one on the other side of things. Standard default approach here. Playground being taken. Smoke's extinguished. Spam back and forth through the boards. We got the babysitter of Kick It over towards B. Just identifying what they're up against here, VP. And they're happy to take this really slow pace. That aggressive Deep. smoke. Yeah, that's going to at least put a, a lot of information through the lines of communication as Sanji takes a bit of damage through connector. Quite the angle he's working on there. Now, let's see how Dupree fares on this aggressive long info. It's good info because that flash, sometimes a sound cue can be enough to call, cause a bit of disarray. And if an AWPA was there, where Device traditionally is, he'd have to flash up and he couldn't re-pick. So the fact that Dupree keeps all that info is huge. That allows Device to stay in swing, and we can see him rotating around towards the top of A, maybe even back to B. A, this is prime for Zipex to at least get one or two. There's the first flash coming. He's going to turn it. Doesn't quite get the timing right. Sanji with an important nice second. Wow, that really does make things difficult now for Magisk. He's been good so far. Six frags to his name. Needs a couple more. Device on his perch, and it does seem primed for at least a shoulder peak. The flashes do seem to enable safe passage. Magisk to contest. Oh, Buster the bodyguard with one HP to spare. Surely you don't go for this one. VP locking it down. Yeah, look where Dupree is. He pushed long. He took all that space. The info was too little too late, and they will have to save. So the double D convo, you combo even. They're having a bit of a convo. You can see the talk going on there on Dupree's POV. And this is clean, right? Buster's on one, Sanji's on 35, but those two entries into Monster after the, the opening kill from Zipex, clean as you like. Yeah, and he was pretty, pretty damn flashed. I think he got his crosshair towards his general vicinity just as he lost vision. But you could see the spacing, right? There wasn't somebody on like right on his six. So uh, Zipex is like, okay, I'm going to dip out of the way, tried to dodge, tried to pull out a nade. And in that time, the second part of the pack comes through and trades him out. It's yeah. always dangerous when you go for wide spacing like that, but they pulled it off here. Yeah, and you can see that his awareness of the flashbang as well. It was like a really weird timing. Like Zipex was like, where's the second? Where's the flash? He ended up just staring at the wall as he died because whether it was CT or T, that was Sanji's second and real influential frag. Of course, this exchange, that could easily have been a double had Magisk found that double head with his M4A1. Buster survives with just a one point of health. Uh, they're going to partial buy behind this. So Astralis in with some Deagles and Kevlar, the Glaive, Magus, and Zipex, and the other two have these saved guns. So not the easiest of rounds for VP to go up against, but back towards B. This is going to sound like a bit of a broken record as the game continues here. Round number five. And is we there pace here? Yeah, there there is. is. No time to set up. There is a wall of smoke. Buster straight through him. Zipex 
does manage to combine for a nice double, actually, with his Deagle in that smoke. It does look like the site's now there. This is where things will get interesting, though. If they can contest, if they can rock the boat just a little more. James disconnected from the pack. Device, don't forget, has his AWP. There isn't a kit in sight, so contesting this plant, not going to be possible, would have been ideal. Bomb down. Clock now favours VP with every passing second. Yeah, James just cleared connector as well, so they know where to draw their eyes. Focus should be on CT spawn in heaven, and it is. And I think for Astralis here... Play percentages. Nice. Hang around, see if you can find one, and if you can, then get going. If not, drop back and save onto these weapons. Smoke towards Sandbag. May as well send the Deagle in, I suppose. Looks like he's flashing for Dupree's clear, and from short, great timing on the peak. That's enough to send device packing. Important stuff from Jame there as well. If we want to point out the little details, that smoke landed, he pushed through it to fight with his team. You know, he's not trying to play the late round. He's trying to get in there, take them out as they try to retake the site, and zero and five. VP off to a banger of a start here. This is uh, running away from Astralis in the early stages, at least. We might see a second gun round coming out now. Okay. It's just crazy how you can just favor one bomb site for the first five rounds. Of but also, knowing, conscious of your opponent, if you've convinced yourself, whether it's through you know scrims, practices, or preparation, that you can at least evenly trade into the bomb sites, why not keep hitting B? Because yeah. you know you're against Astralis, and you know they'll play that percentage every time. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? These are the guys who started saving, at least with buckets and spades, before most. The CT the economy can be their worst enemy. Yeah, now there's a kid in play going into the first gun round, so uh, second gun round, sorry. So that's. Looking pretty good for Astralis here. We've got the Dunk Nades ready and raring to go. Kick it and lob one out. Light damage. Ooh, a bit more than light. That's going to leave a mark. Trying to punish and good damage from Magisk on the cross back. But my question is, is how long can they get away with this? How much can they lightly, lightly throw uh, towards the A site before you stop seeing this double D lean? Well, that's why I think that Dupree is all the way up long here behind the tree, right? If they don't put any presence, he can push for some time. But this jewel right here, as Buster's coming in, there's aggression everywhere on the map right now from VP. Yakinda's searching monster. Buster just... Got nothing off that flash, so Yakinda can stick around. Yeah, this is really scary. Oh. He's not going to see him. This is going to be a Dupree frag all day of the week. Now, what kind of info does that concoct? Looks like the three men stay vigilant. Oh, tucked in. Sanji actually should have a good chance here. Zipex trying to get away the wall bang. The it's fantastic. Long range. I think he's got him. Ticket does it. That's a frag and a half. And now they have numbers. One man advantage into the site. And Magis has fluffed oh, his lines a little bit. VP flipped the script. We're looking at a 6-0 here. You know that Dupree and Device are super detached. Yeah, he's marooned again. Dupree was all the way over at long, the longest rotation point to get to help that B bomb site. So the info, even though Buster goes down, it's like, yeah, that's fine. We can isolate probably a couple of jewels on the B site if we trade out efficiently, like they did. Well, this is a scenario you find yourself in. And James still operating with an AK, not even an AWP yet, and he's hunting. Might find one here. All right, well, they know where Device lives. At least get the chase on right now. VP have built it. Decent bank within the early stages just here. Looks like they're more than content just to keep what they have. Kick it finding that kill, that's great comms, right? Sanji calls, he's sandbag. Kick it was already low from that exchange, spamming the boards, gets a kill running away. You can just, meanwhile, cause and have it coming through monster. So VP pressure, independently man. are happy to take these jewels. Yeah, you look can at see this. this. Just gets there, starts spamming. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Oh, that is so punishing. Almost around the corner too, wow. Okay, yeah, so Kick It was hanging a little bit back there. You can see his HP took that damage through the smoke and is still able to make himself find an opening kill. So can't be going better for VP right now. This is what I'm, like Jame has just bought into another AK. Still operating on the T side with the AK-47. I don't know when they're gonna flip the switch on this. Flick, flick. Stralis. <laughs> My question is, is, you know, how reliant is that early info on those fountain peaks? You know, they've, it's, at times, majority of the times, they've even had three people on B when yeah. they're hitting B. I don't even know if it's a question of info. More execution. This is going to be really interesting to see what the response is from Zonic and as well, well, as well as Glaive, of course. We haven't seen the timeout called. Ten seconds. We are getting back into our seventh round of play. If you just joined us, you are just in time. Our second quarterfinal of IEM Katowice. It's much harder for Device to get activated as well if they just keep going B, right? For the AWP to retake that site, it's not easy. If he's not getting free picks over towards A, that's difficult. Device's only kill right now was onto Jame, and that's when Jame was chasing him. So keep that in mind, as it looks like they're barreling straight towards the sewer pipe yet again. Thinking better of that molly, and, well, Magus is aggressive, so that makes sense. Yeah, he's going to be standing, contesting for this territory this time around, and nading off the door, enabling a bit of a crossfire for Dupree to support him here. One flash, oh. and he's cooked. Yeah. 
And he's not ready for that. Doesn't adjust in time. Dupree's could could have the element of surprise here. Buster seems prepared. Oh, They're it's so a ready. massacre. Glaive's caught. Clawed one back through the boards. But VP can slow it down. They can play the game at their pace here. It's CTs that need answers. Yeah, and Device is out of the play again. One of your most influential CT side of players has nothing to do. He has to stay A just in case you fall back. You could gamble stack the B side if you'd like. But Hail Mary so spray. Time. Yeah, nearly caught Jane for the equalizer. So they can pause, like, watch this. This is just going to be paranoia. Watch it spread amongst the Danish ranks. They need info, right? You can see Glaive flirting with the idea of pushing. If he does, Buster's on the other side, ready and rearing. Watching connector and the sandbag position. Glaive could find the timing on this. They need a little bit of info, VP. Device has actually pushed for his own smoke to try and perhaps feign Jame into a false sense of security. There's a smoke at the end of those toilets. He may take that as a cue that Device is distantly holding. And yep, with his oh, that's a huge miss. awkward. Device at least gets some info, knows there was utility towards A, and actually that's pulled Zipex off the site. It's a, it's a better fake than he could have dreamed. They're walking oh. into the site, it's dr it's bone dry. We well, dropped it in the pit. Oh, he gets there just in time. Zipex, can you contest the plan? I'm not sure. Glaive wants to try, Sanji to babysit. Great headshot. Looking good for a seventh here, set up for success. He's ahead of it. Oh, not quite, gray screen. Options limited, Device clawed one back. That's the long fight though. And so I'm afraid, yeah, Zipex, unless you've got a little three-piece in your pocket, that's going to be a seventh. I want to give a massive thumbs up to Sanji, right? This player is the uh, support player for this team. Ride or die support player. Oh, Sanji might even get the kill on Device here. He's kind of close. Device keeps his orbs. Not going to let this one go. He's got three kills, Alex. All of them have been while saving. He's had no impact. It's device time. He's had, but he's had, he's had zero impact in yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, he, he, can't, he can't get a lick of it, right? That's a good point. Oh, no! Oh, okay. Oh! Yeah! He saves himself. Yikes. Well, okay. And that's the most exciting Stralis round we've seen. <laughs> while device is trying to hold on to that gun. Again, I want to point it out. They're winning 7-0. VP missed some basic nades going into the site again. Right? Dad, you're such a nerd for these nades. No, but I have to point it out, right? They're winning while missing nades. Yeah, fair like, play. That's fair showing play. you. Which one are we talking? Which of the scuff on they, this Just one? then they tried to throw some basic nades through sewer. One ah, of them okay. missed. It didn't even make it over the wall. So there is, there's a flustered element to VP's oh, play. Oh, definitely. Despite the fact that they are, I mean, 7-0 <laughs> up in a kind of eats a quarterfinal. Damn, where did his health go? He ran straight through the flames. It's rare to see so much conversion off the back of that. Well, he's finally got the AWP, right? So let's see. Oh, Device is almost in a position to catch them on that boost on slide. So could be interesting. They won't be going there, though. He does have an angle for the cross long as well. Okay. He's tugged in in time, so we can all take a deep breath. Here's the thing. At, at this point of the game, as long as one player from VP continues over towards that B side to spam, to just make a little bit of noise, even just watch the pushes, Astralis have to stay honest. They can't They can't rotate too many players away from B. Right now, they still have three players stuck on the site who have no idea what's going on. Mm, glorious run boost. Smooth as butter. Device. Oh, got trouble. three targets approaching, and that's a very nice find. More to come. His wrist works it out. So does the shot convert. Now Dupree locked in. Buster's trained his aim on it. Flash to escape, and he's played it so well. Oh, he Big even kill. finishes it off. Sitting, Duck Dupree, Buster grabs the AWP, may be able to catch a Inquisitive Glaive should he want answers long. Oh, he's got someone in store. Util as well. Sanji and Kick at advancing. I expect this. He hears it, this is a good punish. And now Glaive can contest Sanji and Kick at advance. It's a 2-1 split of the CTs, a 2-on-2 two two on this site, and... Oh, just... Nugget of intel. Utility pulled away. Still many answers required for Astralis. Glaive unsure and paranoid of the long position. Oh, I like that. Flash forcing the fight. Kick it converts and now a two on two. That's a lot of damage though. Smoke to cover the plan. The spray won't stop it. Just kick it and he's knocked on his bottom. There it is. Astralis break their silence. An important first on the board. Oh, and they won't be able to scavenge an AWP, which means Device won't have an AWP going into this round. They're actually dropping guns across to make this work. So. That is the first round. Device has had an opportunity to get multiple kills, at least as they were advancing to his site, and he passed that test. So this is great stuff. If they come towards A, Astralis know that they can stop them at least. And that was Glaive with some massive plays as well right there. So seven to one, still a very difficult task to get back in this one, Astralis. But their T side in the past has been very, very potent. So look at this. Device now operating with only an M4A1S. And he's isolated. That Molly's burning behind him. Ooh, I don't think he'll be complaining after that one, to be honest. A yeah, good one for one, especially taking down your Kinder, right? He's very, very explosive, takes a lot of space and wins a lot of his fights. But now Dupree 
He's up here all on his lone, so Magus has rotated back, but they're still quite disconnected at this stage. Dropping back will be Dupree, and now more of a passive hold from Astralis here. Kick it, still babysitting over towards the B bomb site. This is over past 101 as well, because they've done enough, but through utility and device's death, to slow VP down. They're going to take a 30-second stroll now to procedurally clear all of this potential. Here's the problem. If VP aren't able to crack into the A bomb site with a successful round, we know they're going to start defaulting back towards B, and Astralis might be one step ahead of that. So a bit more utility out long. Buster takes some space. Jame looking for the jump over towards the bank position as well. And Astralis just keep moving around. They don't know exactly where this attack is coming from. Oh, he actually hit that through four different walls, but Jame on a very, very tight peak. I think they might leave Buster here to lurk, right? Look how forward this position is. He could even sell a bit of a fake here with this smoke. And still towards top of connector is the bomb. So VP haven't even made up their mind just yet. This would be quite the call, actually. It seems convincing. As the util reigns in, looks like Glaive's actually taking the... Ooh, ooh, he's not sure, he's not convinced, he's all too switched on, especially now he hears the audio. Knows they're coming in short, this is going to be an intense 19 second affair, they're still smoked off, it looks so good for Astralis. There should be no way in, 14. Three players to get through a beautiful angle. Oh. Knocked on his bottom, but another required five seconds of the bombs loose. They haven't got a way in. It's a nice hold, Astralis, an important conversion. They'll be able to keep the uh, funds flowing, albeit just by the narrow margins. They really are getting through with just two players alive every time. Got the AWP this time, though. So That's something. Yeah, Device will be happy to have that back in his hands. And the money has been broken for VP at this juncture. Sanji with 7.6. Maybe we'll see a classic AWP drop for Jane. Oh, they might definitely. What, if, it's not even a question of if we will, it's when we will. And I think to note, these two rounds that they've lost is in the... Uh, exploration of the A bomb site, right? So they've spent a bit more time over towards A and they've been beaten down in that regard. So I want to see how VP pivot from this because that was fantastic work from Glaive that a hold onto his molly so late. They did the same thing against Spirit when we remember the Inferno game with Astralis, right? They held onto their utility very late and they punished these teams who want to play, which seems to be the CIS brand of Counter-Strike. They all seem to be reading that Zeus handbook from years ago. And two on the trot now, so things are starting to look better and other players are livening up. Magus was leading the way with a couple of those Deagle kills early. Device, four of those seven kills have been while trying to save. Uh, Glaive, the impact as well, five assists for him. On the other side, Yakinda and Buster with nine kills apiece. Good stuff from Sanji again. Timeout has concluded and well, they've made the buy work, of course. A couple of Galils, two AKs and another. So Jame not asking for that AWP. This could be even more of a set piece off the bat as quite a few members from VP are making their way over towards the B bomb site. See how this one shapes up. It feels fast and trade. aggressive trading. Yeah, Kick has done well to shut down Zipex before that got a little out of hand. Another smoke's just dropped in the middle. Was that an aggressive Astralis smoke? It may have been, because that was uh, like two cars colliding right there in Monster. So everyone's just going to put down their guns for a moment and wait and see what's to come next. No Dupree pushing long this time. So information has been denied from Astralis. They're definitely looking to be getting into their groove here, Chad. Yeah, I'd be pretty angry after a 16-1 uh, defeat just the other day, but if anyone's going to shrug it off and anyone's going to come back, it's going to be the Astralis boys. You can almost see the conversation happening. <laughs> Drop me the bomb. Yeah. Yep. Where are we going? Okay, so I'll throw this late. Yeah, okay. You want me to do that? Yeah, okay. And the mid round is established. Let's see how they uh, how they fare in the not running down the clock situation, though. There's three players on the B bomb site right now for Astralis. That within is... a pixel of each Look other. Look at that hold. It's going to be so reactive. So Mega spots. Glaive drops the smoke. Device orb short. So they're trying to na they're trying to funnel them into that right side of the pillar that we can see so here. The smokes with to channel them in. Yeah. To try and protect your Orpa. Smoke's right, going to land now. Here we go. Can't beat that smoke. Kicker's going to have to respect it. He will drop his own towards the bridge, and he's still no info for Dupree. He is tucked in in the off angle. The bomb is going through. This is all a fake. Dupree's got a bit of a take, bit of a test here. Hard clear. Does convert it. Needs right another, is. though. And there's Buster putting an important one out. on the board. 10 seconds. They will be able to get the bomb down. Look how locked out they are, and Kicker's still worrying about the rotation. This is going to be an important set of opportunities for Buster and Jame. And Device has gone a little ahead of the pack there. That staggers their pacing. It looks great for VP now. Jame holding their advance. A little jiggle. A great reaction from Glaive. He's in the sight. He's in the round. He wants more. Magisk as well, ready to respond to his leader's every demand. With five bullets left in the chamber, though, he's going to have to be precise. And nothing left. Buster's got him. Not much left on the clock either, Magisk. Okay, but no time. It looks like Kickit. He can just play this one by the fundamentals. Play it by the book. 
Magis knows that's not his. Kick it converts and steals that one away. Considering how intimidating that crossfire was, Chad, they definitely pulled that one out. They're facilitating rifles here instead of orbs, right? They are not relying on Jame to be the only factor in finding them kills. They are doing this as a team. And I think that is the story for VP throughout, right? Just showing up, getting it done. And the fact that Buster takes all this space, right? This trade on Dupree was everything. Buster's trade right there and denying that space over towards bank for device. Two huge kills right there. And VP, they're so cheeky. They are so cheeky. The fact that Kicker on his own is walking into the B bomb site and keeping three players busy. He kept three players busy. That right there, you don't see that in the stats. Three Astralis players locked on B and he's still hanging out there by the time the bomb's going down dice, like he's done it. All right, the second timeout. Zonic just with a furrowed brow says, uh, go kill. You're gonna have Deagles, it's gonna be scouts. VP are well and truly equipped for the uh, circumstances. Looks like it's going to be a nice division. Probably two, if not three, MAC-10s into the mix. Good chance for them to find, farm some money here for the uh, late part of this first half. You can see that they're actually uh, looking at the bottom of the barrel money as well as far as what's in reserve. So if they can keep this clean and farm with the MAC-10s, that is picture perfect for VP. If these Deagles and Scout get anything done, well, Astralis get to keep their money honest. Do love me a Scout. Can't use it very well, but it's a satisfying weapon to see wielded correctly. And he's going to give it another go. Look at that smoke. Is that another flubbed? Or is that for Buster's walk and drop down? It looks pretty perfect. All by design. This is a duel. Dupree lets it go. Sanji quick on the trigger. Okay. Well, now they know there's a couple of players over towards Sandbag, as well as the scout of device over towards the A site. So information being recalled here on the VP side. Bit of defensive utility going out, trying to funnel them into one choke point here is, yeah, look at this, of course, VP going nice and slow. They're going to regroup and they will be diligent about their approach. Have two smokes, bucket load of flashes and one Molotov to work with here. And they're just in multiple different packs, just searching across the map right now. Two towards long, two towards connector, clearing out sewer. They've still got kick it, of course, babysitting the backyard position. You'll see him there time and time again. His A and D are completely worn off. <laughs> that was a good jiggle. And back towards B. So a lot of the action has oh, been... Look how tucked in side. Buster is. I don't know if he's even been gone. He's going to be such an annoying late arrival. Ugh. And they're pushing A right now as well, Astralis. So they've gone out on a fact-finding mission of their own. They'll be able to come down connector behind. I wonder if he does. We'll see. They're into the site. Going to be completely wide open. And a missed shot from device enables a bomb plant. Does knock the fingernails off of your kinder. Another bit of flak damage dealt. Ooh. And again through the box. This is getting sketchy. Zipex again, claws it back, converts on the earlier damage. Three versus four, now two. His lineup not far off, but Yakinda has made a round out of it. Here's the thing that I noticed with how late that teams like VP are... Oh. He's not a knifer, is he? I don't think so. He's not a knifer. Is oh, he? Do it. Do it, Buster. Oh. Do it, Buster. Big PP. Oh, yes, Buster. That is what we like to see. Look at that absolute freebie. I was talking about making money with those Mac 10s. He's making money with the bloody knife right there. 4.7 in his bank balance after that one. The thing that I notice with these teams like VP, Spirit's the same, I think we can probably say Gambit as well, is when they get into these late round site takes, that they're calm and everybody's always covering something. I don't know at what point that's communicated. I don't know if they're all just cerebrally talking to one another. I, I don't know how, but every single time they are covering the exact peaks. They're not overextending. They're playing these situations. Yeah, so everything good. is accounted for. Uh, Jame only has a Glock. That is correct. Jame? Block time, okay. So Dupree contesting. Look at their health as the nade and bullets land in. Are they gonna win a round where Jame only has a Glock? Uh, might be Buster. Where's Sanji's when you need him? Sanji? Boy? Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. There, look, there have been some nervy moments in this game for VP. And I'll keep saying they keep flubbing the smoke. Jame hasn't bought a gun, but they are still winning, right? And they, they, not only are they still winning, the score is nine to two. It's fine, someone had to bite the bullet. They just knew they were going to gobble nades. It wasn't worth it. It's all financial <laughs> five head. <laughs> They're thinking uh, for round 14 and Yeah, 15. man. You've got to plan ahead in your finances these days. So they're up long and they can do so relatively loudly with your kind of probing toilets. Glaive could have a real lovely timing here. Okay, this all comes down to whether Sanji holds it. He wants to clear it as well. Look at this. Yeah, and it should be an easy scout conversion. That's all they util. They're, they're, they're kind of counting on his smoke for bank. Buster, that jiggle could be the death of you, my... Okay. 
Backs away. Glaive, this is where everything oh, though. Perfect timing. Oh, it be better. Oh, it's a massacre. Just three to the back of the dome. Device lines up another one, and poor old Zipex was left alone. Doesn't have any issue converting your kick at late Lurks. So there we have an, an important conversion, considering the VP did come in with a bloody Glock into that one. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. I, I maybe take a timeout just to talk that one through. Not sure if someone was meant to drop a gun or if you're sometimes the player dropping a gun, then you forget to buy one yourself. I, I didn't see exactly how that unfolded. I caught it a little bit too late, but uh, VP will be buying back in. So where, where were you when the Glock meta was established? Okay, James has a P250 this time. I thought he was leaving spawn with a Glock again. Uh, so we're, we're getting back underway here. He finally picked something up. He has a P250 in the MAC-10, and, and they're getting ready to go hard B. So the buys have been a shambles from VP in these last two rounds. Flustered. But look, they, they can almost set up completely for a B execute again. They are going contact through the pipe. Three players very tight knit here. Tupri can really oh, surely the contest timing. it. The smoke is perfect unless he sprays through it. They won't have any info. Uh, no early warning sign. And there's a sitting duck. There's more to come. Unloads his mag, Aww. running out of bullets, running out of chances, running out of teammates. Three bodies drop. VP surge into the B site. You can see how perfect that was again. Uh, the timing there, as a pack coming through the pipe, as soon as there's a chance they get spotted from connector, a smoke goes down. They just walk straight up sandbag and the B players, nades in their hand. Yeah, They're not ready for this type of pace change. Magisk and Glaive were both not, not re anticipating the pace on that. And now they have to save again. This is double digits. This is no 16-1, but this is still a very convincing first half here from VP. Yeah, they really are having absolutely no issues converting. And that was off the back of, again, you've been, you know, critical of some of the minor adjustments that you can make financially. But in terms of execution, these boys are doing what they've been doing all day, every day. Converting rounds against the big dogs and doing it here in Katowice. Astralis, the only team that weren't from the playing stage, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So out of the, uh, well, now that we've lost Na'Vi, yeah, Astralis are the only team remaining who were straight within that group stage, right? The teams who had the top eight amount of EPT points. So when you consider that, everybody else has had to come through the play-ins where we started with best of ones. It was more of a cutthroat format over the two days. Then these teams all got stuck into the main group stage. And uh, it's interesting to see that of all the Titans, all of the big names, Astralis is the only one hanging on here. Let's see what kind of fight the Titans can put up, or is this truly going to be one of these, you know, events we reference as somewhat of a bookmark as to the changing of the guard, you know, some of the new names who've been on this grind locked to their bedrooms as they always were, this time alongside those legendary names. All right, well, it's much of a muchness here from VP, but Astralis want to change things up. Zipex is getting quite aggressive That's through that it. smoke. Oh, that's a chaining of the tide, and he wants more. The Akinda gets his trade straight back into an even kill. I feel this has to be the case from Astralis, though. Turn these into more biffs. Don't allow you to be played like a fiddle here within the late rounds. And Yakinda just lurking around this smoke. He's going to completely clear out this sewer section as towards long. Some noise is being made, but here comes the monster push. Kick it very aware. Jump peeks it. Look how aware he's they so are diligent. of all the little details. So, so oh. ready. And he's going to punish on the swing. The, the Flash isolated it into two 1v1s and he's just dipping out now. Knows Glaive can hunt. His angles are rehearsed and He's still ready. coming. He's still coming. Oh, you just can't mess with that. The little detail there for everybody at home, right? Players walking into the spell of that in Monster, it's been happening for a little while, but the fact that he knows just as it's fading, I'm not going to pick. There's a jump peek and yeah. yeah, man. Just those little details now. VP, 40 seconds left, plenty of time. No sweat on their brow, but need to get past Magus and Device. Lots Ooh. of nades left. Can't help but wonder if they are going to lean one way. They haven't really gone A, right? And I think if you know you're dealing with an AWPA, three players going towards A, you can probably overwhelm Device. He's even passive. He's even smoke for Buster. He'll walk up on that. Thank you very much. Knife out. 20 seconds. They can go. Utilities limited. It is only going to be the bottle of flame. Device knocks one on his ass. Kicker has to cross the site. 10 seconds. He has to cross Device. And look at that incendiary. Going to have to be a bankside plan. Can Device contest it? He has to come bankside. I think he's got time for the digits. Two on two, Buster to punish. I guess he's flanking. Timing was everything here. Kick it, spanked, needs another. This is three for Device, looking for his fourth Buster. Tucked in, Magisk is closing the gap. And Device just isn't missing. That's an important conversion. There we have it, four for the Danish Orpa. Nice from VP to overcome a lot of the advers ad adversity thrown their way. Lots of aggression, lots of little uh, micro adjustments there from Astralis. Dupree getting stuck in early, finding one, making uh, them a little bit more light as their default spread. 
And look, Kickit did fantastic, but this is it. Device, when he's had opportunities to find kills, he has been really good. It's just that they've been going the other bomb site, and now that we're getting to the late stages, he needs to find himself getting impact just like this. So 10-5 on the half. Astralis, I think they'll be pretty happy with that. Yeah, it's going to be the uh, competitive half into our second. Final round of the first half. First map, VP's pick. Good to see you guys getting your jerseys on and gathering at the AT&T fan cam. You can join that at esl.gg slash fan cam. Into the action. Device fancies his chances. In fact, there's a lot of attempts across the board. Yeah. No bloodshed yet. Changing it up on the fly here, I think, Astralis. Device wants to stay looking for a pick as well. Going to be molotov out of position. Has to drop back. More bullets through the boards. Shout out to Jakey for somehow trying to make sense of this chaos on the open air. Both teams have come with a different Ooh. bit of hunger into this round. Hunting for that info in all of these nuanced ways. Jumping now off of the slide. Dupree's out of line of sight. Did they see him, though? He was crouched. I don't think so. Still swinging out nicely. Now with a click of his mouse, a disadvantage for Astralis to overcome. Magic is overextended, they know it. Kick it, not tempted at all. As they smoke monster, he might be. The timing on that peak. He's lost his life. Two casualties now for Astralis, Chad. Yeah, it's clear. Connector control is something Astralis wanted to fight for, but they've lost too many bodies doing it. And Device oh, has just spotted the booties. It? Definitely saw some toes. Might get another shot here on Sanji unless he jumps up and over. Such a slither gap. Just on the edge of that smoke, he's hoping for something. He pulls it off. Through the smoke, through the door. Oh. And Glaive had a chance to really level the odds there. The bomb is still in T-spawn and there's 30 seconds left. Doesn't stop Buster and Jane making this damn convincing. Well, I think Kicker might be able to get there. Pick up the baton and run it towards that A-bomb site, but Device is here again. And already causing problems. He uses that smoke now to disappear and Kicker responding to punish this wide open site. Now wide open, perhaps a slight exaggeration because Zipex is tucked in on graffiti. He won't necessarily- oh, Device Ooh, is here too. They've got the info and they haven't got the shot. Oh! Your kinder does. He can plant, my God, the narrowest of margins. They want this 11th and they have pulled it off. Bomb ticking, locked. locked in. Using their smoke to the greatest of their advantage as it fades, it's an advantage. James now fills the roost. Low HP, could be over now, would need something out of the heavens from Zipex. Yakinda's got the sound and James got the frag. There you have it, an 11 VP. They do not falter. Punishing on their map pick. See how defense goes.
One of the things that I believe that Virtus Pro is doing really great in this tournament is obviously the addition of having Yekendai in the team. He's been a really strong asset to the team in terms of putting a lot of aggressive moves in there. Obviously, they have some really great players in, in the rest of the team as well, but James as well is, is that really strong offer that they, they can always rely on. And then they have the additions of just having a really good in-game leader and also having Bust doing some really good stuff. And I think they are a team that, that have some really good assets in terms of good strategies, but also a team that is really strong individual. So they are a really strong team to go against and you can definitely not sleep on them. The Intel Extreme Masters and we continue. We are your commentators for this one. It is the second quarter final of the day and it's a joy and a privilege to be bringing it to you, our machine. The man looking good in the blue shirt. Maybe blue today. Yeah, matches yeah. your eyes. Yeah, uh, I know. Not really at all. Yeah. Even way, either way, uh, we've got a bit of a rematch. We haven't seen this in about a year and a half. VP Astralis, the first map, and VP have laid down the glove. They have challenged Astralis to quite the duel. Clearly a competitive one. And I mean, they've even managed to accrue the same amount of rounds they got in that major grand final yeah, well. in the first half <laughs> of the first map. It's a pretty nice showing here and Yakinda, the new boy, leading the way on 17 kills. They have done this in style VP so far. Let's see if they can continue the pain because through Connector, look at this stack. This is gonna be chaos. Okay, Yakinda should be hitting something. It's Buster to actually fill the feed. Buster twice. He's still down there. He's still breathing. They need fresh clips. The bomb retrieval mission. If he gets another, Ow. he has managed to claw three out of that absolute chaos. Body bags all over the shop. Sirens wailing in the distance. And Device wants a duel. Jame wants a health shot. He's hanging He's around hit. Too. Yeah, he'd need that one tap. Didn't expect the walk up. Device with a punish and a nice little USP upgrade. Okay. There's a nade, a smoke, and a flash on kick it here. So this is going to come down to the fights. That utility may come in handy in a one-on-one, -on -one, but first of all, he needs to gamble correctly. He's lucky the rotation time between these two sites. If he stays on top of the dice boxes here, won't be too far. And playing with the clock is Astralis. You can see the time, 50 seconds left, and they're both making their way back towards T-spawn. It feels like they're gripping up for a bit of a B hit. And once they get in and plant that bomb, it's much more difficult for somebody like Kickit to be able to bait out these fights. And... Oh, kick it. He doesn't know where to end up either. There is a chance he could be getting flanked. There's so much space that could be taken. And with this, he's gambling back towards B. Yeah, I think he's using the time as a bit of a sign that there's probably been some walking afoot. It's an open plan. It is. There's a chance he could... Oh, my God. He's just been oh, created a gift. Oh, it's not quite the gift. Now he has. Fully unwraps Dupree. Device is tucked in. It's going to be reactionary at this point. Feels like he has an idea as well. He's got a flash. Oh, Ooh, great, great shots. A double dink. Kicker could barely process that one. Okay, Astralis on the board in the pistol. Lucky to be as well. You can see with Dupree going for that plant, he's more worried about sandbags than he was Heaven or he was CT Spawn. He is very, very lucky that uh, Kicker ran around the corner with a HE in, in his hands instead of the USP. Because he runs around there with the USP, he gets the kill. Device doesn't have the bomb plan. He doesn't have that extra man. That 40 seconds already going down. And Kicker can win that one-on-one. -on -one. Going for that fight from Device was probably his best way in as well. You know Kicker's going to throw something before he goes looking. Okay, stress now. Astralis with some big frags and back towards the underpass. They want to contest again, even with the USPs. Let's not forget how thorough they were with their Molotovs on this second round. So Astralis testing as well. Looks like they're passed with flying colors as they completely flush them out. Yeah, Sanji went forward, but it was for the team. It doesn't look oh, like it. what they were hoping for. There it is. A Mac 10. I think it might be just a Mac 10 at this point. More flames in a bottle. Flushes Jane forward. Oh, oh, oh. not quite. They know where both of them are. That's a nice kill. They're doing a lot of damage. This was a full USP round here. Yeah, so some cash. anything they get is great. Another smoke for Buster. Dude, we have, you know, <laughs> we've definitely not done Buster's fragging justice. I've just taken a look. It's just Yakinda and him at 37 combined. Yeah. My Lord. Hadn't quite considered just how many multi-kills he was converting for them in that first half. Take a lot of space as well. And here, if he can hold on to this MAC-10, maybe Sanji will want to operate with it on a gun round. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Any more damage he can do will be wondrous for that bank balance. Bomb's going to go off. The lost bonus coming through is going to be plentiful at this point. We're looking at 2,400 in the next. 
And now Buster, after getting a couple of kills, has uh, 5.9k, which means he can drop an orb what over to time. James. And they will do it. All right. Yeah. Okay. So James got in the orb. Buster's been able to facilitate that. That means everybody's going to have armor behind this. The utility should be good. Kickit's actually opted for a Famous. Not a diffuse kit purchased in just yet. Hmm. And we are going to be seeing those uh, Mac 10s equipped. Plenty of helmets available. Your Kinder only going to be the most vulnerable victim to those mobile and dynamic SMGs. Good bang for your buck as well. well it's a four-man B lean right now, so expecting a B play early VP. And while well, nobody's home, it's just Zipex doing exactly what we saw Kicker do in that first half. Babysit backyard. Your Kinder with a deep molly. That's all of his ascender. In, that's all of his utility gone. And he's playing very passive towards A, so these Mac 10s are brave. Glaive taking some gaps, taking some space. They might even just go contact here, and if they do, they're going to find a Whoa. massive gap. Yeah. Don't even know if your kinder's got that information. I don't think he's ready for this. No, knife out. Still got his knife out. Really wasn't expecting that. Now the information is translated. Well, folks, we've got a wide open site. Is it time to save? save? Yep. Yeah, it might be. Start that 40 second timer. Now, if I'm the likes of Zipex, I'd be still be trying to lock them in here. And you can see he's thinking about going back towards T spawn. VP really need to hold on to these guns. This 11 4 scoreline, Zonic, the coach of Australis, says it's uh, one of the most deceptive scorelines in the game. So we'll see if Australis can come back from it. He's thinking. Roll reversal here. You can take our spawn, we'll have yours. Ah, that's why. James been missing the live music, Alex. This is the closest I think we get to it these days. Oh, he's potentially losing out on an AWP next round if he doesn't get oh, saved Oh, he's going to get mollied. Smokes, nades, oh, they're doing anything yeah. they can. It's a solid defense. Kick it even close one through the smoke. Looks like the CTs have got all four hearts beating into our 19th. That's an important distinction to make. Yeah, it means they will get another gun round, right? So one of these four individuals who survived on the side of VP will be able to drop a gun across and get your kinder equipped. And they'll be able to do that. So now that they're aware that Astralis want to go for those type of punishes, this is where VP have to ask him a question. Do we go for the same setup and we'll be a little bit more diligent? Yes, that is the answer. I don't even have to give you option B. Because uh, once again, four players over towards the B bomb site just in case of early aggression. It's a lot of responsibility on young Yakinda. Yeah, and he's a bit more forward this time. So. If he goes down in this scenario, it could be even worse than what we saw transpire last round. More utility towards connector, smoked off. Molly's are good, keeping them at bay, making sure they can get that under their remit early here, Astralis. And just combing forward with this standard default approach. Lots of nades being held onto by VP. Take a look. Oof. They've only put out a, a very few amount of nades within this, so they might be expecting Astralis to slow this one right down. You normally see Molotovs towards the pipe, you know, smokes towards monster constantly. They're not doing any of that. Okay. They're slowly putting smokes out now. That was at 110. They must have this time down to perfection. You can do though. Like surely, surely he's got a one and done position there. If he's so he's actually searching forward. He wants more. James here on the site now. Does oh, catch Dupree yeah. and he's isolated. He even drops his own smoke. He might be able to get away with that. That's gonna slow things down considerably. There's nothing they can do. James already responsible for long now. You might have to pivot back. Do you want to go back? There's so, there's so much uncertainty and unknown entities there. Yeah, they're lobbing out a few more nades here, so it looks like it will be the A finish. Okay. Still two players stuck on the B bomb site. Long rotation here. And off we go with 28 second mark. This is the commitment. Yeah, Kinder's got a lot to do, as has James. And that was a very nice clean kill from Glaive into the site. Bob's your uncle, the smokes are down, and the bomb is two. Can't really be contested. Sanji throws out a couple of MP9 bullets wildly into the smoke. Four on four. It's going to be very late. Look how far away Kick it is. He does like his late arrivals. Glaive's, or excuse me, devices, all too prepared for it. I forgot how influential these Kick at late flanks were. Even more so if they start losing more bodies on the site, Glaive falls. That just has a perfect angle. And at that yeah, that's loss, to yeah. Save, yeah. Well, it got exciting there for a second, right? It felt like they did enough to really force Astralis into that one, and they did, but it's just the fact that Glaive, and, and Glaive is an individual we need to be given props right now. Let's see if Kick can hold on to this. He'll get himself an upgrade. Two players just on the other side. I want to go over that magic little line, but Kick it will. 
Magus goes down to the bomb. Damage done to Zipex, but no kill just there. Now, yeah, it felt like they did enough saving onto those grenades, but as soon as Yukinda goes down without getting anything, Glaive takes all that space. It's difficult for Jame to operate with the AWP from the bank, and then they're isolated. So good start, but better finish from Astralis here. And now they're up to eight rounds. Like, the fact that Astralis overcome this casualty is testament to how powerful that T-side execute was. Just Glaive finding Yukinda so quickly and so cleanly lost a lot of its potency. And these saved guns uh, give them an opportunity to try and make a buy happen again. Buster can purchase in one more time. There could be a drop from Kick It over towards Sanji, so they can make this one work. Maybe they want to talk through the options of bringing out a double or We've seen Buster do some orping duties before for VP. But yeah, this lead, it was 11-4 at half. They're yet to win a round. It's four straight here for Astralis in the second half. Magus with a much better performance than what we've been seeing from him traditionally in 2021. Device, when he's actually in the thick of it, finding a lot of impact. Glaive, seven assists, but his plays have been very, very influential, right? He's been taking space, taking risks. Those gambles have paid off. It's just crazy to see Jame this quiet. I was just taking the double check at the stats before this game, and I was pretty sure Jame was leaps and bounds above the rest of his team on a map like Overpass. I'll double check that one a bit later. Let's get back underway here. Round number 20. And they did make the buy work. No secondary ult for Buster. Okay. Stralis on their streak. Yet to be silenced by Verta's pro's defense. Yekind has tested and has struggled into the second half. One of the top performers from the first. Does have a partner in crime this time in Jame. But Astralis with a different flavor. Yeah, see, uh, Astralis aren't giving up opportunities to get picked right now. There are four players, very similar to how VP was doing it, tucked in towards Backyard, one dealing with the connector. They've done enough aggressive players over towards Long and uh, Party to make sure that they can't just push and get away with what they'd like. Oh, Glaive probably gets spotted on that jump from Sanji there, and you can see with that spam definitely was the case. So a little bit of information. But look at the setup on A right now. VP have two players over towards Long. If this is a B execute, the players were to defend and Buster grabs one. That was a quick shot. Yeah, but they have to get through Buster's short hold. He's got his angles ironed out and he flattens too. Oh dear, 45. Clock starts to feel punishing. Smoke start to arrive. That is the last of them. And surging through it was Magisk. He's got put down. They can't find anything. Finally, Zipex puts one in the feed for them. No way out. Yeah, I think this might just be a bit of a save call here from Astralis. The money's built up to a decent point. Dupree's the only one going to need a drop going into the next round. So yeah, holding on to this AWP with 20 seconds left might be the right call. And finally, VP, they grab themselves a CT side around here. So scoreline will be 12 to 8. It didn't even feel like they had to do anything too flash there to get that one. Yeah, but just not going towards Buster's position seems to be the play. <laughs> he is having a good game, old Buster. Remember, in the middle of last year, he took a bit of a break, right? He went out of the roster, he was inactive. That's when Yakinda came in. But it wasn't to replace Buster, it was just in lieu of that. And then, obviously, Adren, he's the one who got thrown aside. Buster comes back. And since then, this lineup has been building and building. And these are two huge kills. The fact that he pivots back, he's still got the awareness. See you, nerd. He doesn't have anybody, you know, from barrels leading to the cover there. He does it all himself. So, easy as you like. 12 to 8. Both teams, similar looking buys. Rifles for four. Orps. For one, kits are out. Lots of utility here. VP are set up for success with this one. Okay, so it's not the four-man B lean early out of VP. They've actually put Jame over towards Long straight away. Yukinda down towards Connector, and he's, he's going to take fight. Whoa, he's won it as well. Oh. Surely not a second. Through the flash and the spray, Dupree trades. Chance on Long. Device is posted up. Oh, oh. What an easy shot to hit, and it lands straight into the toes of Jame. Device does punish. It's not enough for lethality, though. Two hamstrung players, one on either side for the remainder of this round. A smoke monster from Buster done his lineups. Oof, good nay. That's a lot of damage onto Kicker right there, and we can see Astralis are clamping down now, too, through the sewers up from Sandbag. Oh, they all look like they're in limbo. Device is joining him now as well. So three. Is it still able to pivot, right? Because they maintain connector control. Oh, this is so clumsy. Oh, oh, the timing, and he peaks just in the nick of time. More damage. Glaive. Device burned away. They've taken such a beating here, Chad. And with 35 seconds, they're trying to pivot into Sanji. Sanji's very passive with this bank line. This is 
Still looks like Astralis haven't made up their mind. Looks like they're trying to play CIS Counter-Strike right yeah, now. Yeah, but it looks like VP aren't quite ready to work this out. There's no one to respond. It's an A fake. Okay. Pulls Buster. Convinced me. Knives are out. Jane might have to step up big here. Short, no, it's going to be Monster. Doubles up there. Bomb, looks like it might be going short late. They're through. Already out. Oh, but a quick shot from Kicker. Eight seconds, that was oh, the bomb carrier. It. Awkward as hell. Glaive surely can't get it down unless Dupree can save him. He's punching in the digits. Jane can't contest. We play on. Glaive so close around the edge of the smoke is Sanji. Dupree would have to ace clutch. Not an easy task, not an easy feat. Tip of the head, and it's just the one. Buster very quick on the trigger. And Verta's pro pull a 13th out of the hat. They were big shots from Kicker there, right? Like, you were bang on. Nobody seemed to know what was going on in that round. It was back and forth, up and down, and then out of position, Kicker hits two bangers. That was some nice shooting. Yakinda doing a good job to destabilize as well. So it, the, the game plan that Astralis started going for late appears to be where Verta's pro is starting, right? Fight for connected control, make things awkward. Don't give them free space. Hit some absolute bangers, and that's all you need to get 13 rounds here. Whew. That could have been a very telling round. Had they conceded that over time, minimum, Astralis could have really ran away with it instead, though we can see that they are a little shaken. Going to be going back in two rounds in a row for the CTs. Keeps the bank nurtured. They have one timeout left after this one here, Astralis. So they've really uh, chewed through these, and they're making this buy happen again. Glaive's been dropped across a UMP. <laughs> Operating with very little here, Glaive. AKs for everybody else. I wonder if they're going to go for something a little bit more decisive off the bat, because Astralis, uh, you know, back and forth in that nature, unable to stabilize right there. Early monster smoke. Pressure towards B again. Nothing given for free. You can see nades, spam. There's always something coming out from VP. And we saw how effective Buster is in short. Not this time. Dupree, a crucial entry. He's provided for his squad. It's one of the more celebrated scalps from the VP roster here on Overpass. Back through an underpass, donated off for convenience. A 2 2 split of the remaining defensive setup. Jame on toilets, near Kinder back to back with him on long. What does the bomb being left there indicate? That uh, Astralis don't know where they want to end up right now. They're just going out on a fact finding mission and using Glaive with that UMP, that lighter weapon, to take this space. And he's done exactly that. James is going to get swarmed on here any second. He has to hit some mad shots. Oh, my Lord. Close quarters orping. He's known for it. Will he do his oh, due diligence? Yeah, what? He flicks into device. Makes something out of that. My Lord, he's got friction burns after that. But it does slow them down. Sanji and Kicker dig their heels in. Your kind is going to have to do more than that. He's going to have to start swinging, windmilling his fists as they start. And he does isolate Glaives walking in. <gasps> Shadow flash is so good, but the spray, he overcomes the flashbang, slowing them down even further. He can't find another. That was asking too much. Bombs loose. It's dice box side. They have to go round. Bank open. Eight seconds, seven seconds. It has to be planting. Kick it can't punish. Anyone can. Sanji maybe. The spray not far off. With one second on the clock. It's extended by the plant. Magic's gone long, oh. wins his duel, and that could be it. Last man is Sanji, no kit. Walking into the site now, but as every every second passes away. There's a kit on the bomb, and they're both oh, away they from the bomb right now. Got a perfect line of sight for it. Kit there, yeah, he's just not convinced. They're both. They don't have the info. He knows where the other one is. He does. Kit now found. He doesn't. Pros don't fake. Pros don't fake. Pros don't fake. Sanji, you absolute <laughs> madman. What a cheeky maneuver. What an absolute madman to go for that type of a play. Ouch. Oh, bruised egos all round for the Danes. A 40 stolen. Robbery in the Kanavitsa quarters. Oh, and those stampeding steps as well. You can see they knew the chain. Oh, Jeez. That was a lifeline. Yakinda is the one that bailed them out, right? The fact he gets two. That was really big stuff. This kill here from, should have been kickets. Should have been kickets every day of the week. Megas coming around that corner. He didn't look ready for that kill. Oh, robbery right there, but impact from Sanji. He's, he's got them a big round. That's 14 to eight right now. 
And yeah, Mega's going to be kicking himself after that one. <sighs> NT's in the chat. You know what that's facilitated by is that they have done their homework and they know kick comes to those late flanks. If they can't get to truck and plant Optimus, they have to plant somewhere else safe. The only other place they could have planted was behind that dice box. So the tendencies of VP coming back to haunt uh, Astralis here because guess what? Kick it wasn't even the player to find the impact in that round. It was Sanji facilitated by that plant, which comes off of kick its traditional play. So uh, you're seeing how it's all connected. And you can see how that clutch went from not winnable to winnable as soon as he heard steps coming towards him yeah. on the fake. He's like, wait. They don't know if I'm holding this. <laughs> they really don't know. Flipped the script, the script right there, didn't he? Okay, well, a different look again from VP. This time they had three players over towards A at the start of things. Now just two, and James searching with the AWP. He might even get a timing here. This is brave stuff around, all around. Your kid is actually trying to nutmeg his smoke. James does again find a frag. Smokes for the escape. Your kid is expecting some funky maneuvers. Oh, he spots him and finds the frag as well. Getting Glaive at his own game. Every right trick, every trick in the book. Good point. Well, Jame knows this is a problem. Oh, that's so clean from Dupree. Two bursts. Eliminates the orb. Perplucks him from the evasive jump. It's a consolation prize at this point, though. Looking set to secure a handful of map points here on their pick. Cheeky jiggles here from Buster as well. It's hard to knock him off that perch. It's good info as well. So now they're well aware that there was one tucked in towards Sua Zipex. Well, he's coming up from that connected position as well. And Yakinda, he has not dropped back. We need something out of Magis here. Zipex has given him a chance, but he wasn't quite in time for the barrels. So kick it, finds another, and just in time, Yakinda stops that before it gets out of control. 15 VP. They're doing it easily as well. This feels in some of these rounds that they're just obliterating Astralis here. Well, they've had, you know, a year and a half to build the scrudge. <laughs> Yeah, that's the, so we've seen so many different looks from VP and how they're approaching this. And yeah, it's very difficult. You see the frustration there for Device. We are moving into train next. That was picked by Astralis. It'll be interesting to see how their map pool continues to develop as we get into the last round of, or potential last round of play here. It's going to be UMP, MAC-10, Deagle, Galil, and an AK. Everybody wielding something a little bit different from Astralis here. Looks like they almost just want to go for a B set piece. With whatever they have, give it a crack. No presence over towards A whatsoever. Buster loves it. He wants to finish this one right now. Brute force. Can't control the spray. Just the one. A missed shot from Jane. Things starting to get a little sketchy now. Stabilized by the nades as they keep them at bay. Kicker. This could be a game changer. It is the bomb. They know exactly what you're up to now. Smoke will enable the retrieval. Heavy damage inflicted to two members of VP. There's still 50 seconds left. Keep your eyes on Glaive and Device here. They're taking space, right? They knew that orb was over towards that short position, and by doing so, they're pushing up. They know that it's unlikely James aggressive. And they're the ones here really just trying to put the hurt on Yakinda, who has no idea. He was just clearing bank. He was. Oh, this should be Glaive's frag. He has to work hard for it. Yukin has inflicted good damage, but A site's wide open for business. Yeah, bombs Expect to coming. see the plant. Do they go for this? It's not really worth it for VP to go for a round like this. Their money hasn't built up. They don't have a bank balance. They may as well save. And they will. So this is the deal, right? VP not taking any unnecessary risks throughout this game, right? Right here, you could say 3v3. They probably know that Glaive's a little bit low. It could be worth a shot, but they know that they just need this one more round to take map number one. Yeah, I mean, there's no need to overcomplicate it or go for the star points. I mean, you this le this style of play has got them this far. The, yeah. the, a lead this large where you can have the luxury of just saying, not not the one for us, guys. The only game that VP lost within the main group stage was to Na'Vi. And then before that in the play-ins, they lost the game to NIP. Those are the only two series that VP have lost in their run so far. Astralis obviously losing to Spirit in that uh, upper bracket final. If they'd won that one, they would have been on the other side of the bracket in the semis. Unfortunately, that's why we do see Astralis and Na'Vi, who have now been eliminated, having to start in the quarters. They flubbed their games, right? They tripped over themselves. Here's Kickets 
Little Houdini moment through the smoke he comes. Zipex goes down. And they've been having quite the duel, those two, right? Kick it as a B anchor on both sides, and same for Zipex. They've been biffing each other here, there, and everywhere. I love the way that Zipex rages. I've been seeing it on the cams. Is I, I'd be a much more throw my arms over. It keeps it quite tight. Yeah, it does. Yeah, keeps his arms inside the vehicle as he rages. Two deagles behind these saved guns. And he the deagles as well. Trying to fill that AWP roll with something a little different, maybe for the long take and duel. So I, I imagine a good component of, of making this difficult for VP would be forcing your kinder to ask for help. And when you've only got a deagle and you have to hold long and toilets, that's one way to do it. He's got the info. He's fired off a shot to slow him down, and now surely he calls for some sort of backup. Yeah, they might think better of going through the bathrooms looking for him against a deagle. We know the two bullets to the belly has become more and more potent. James actually going rot to rotate over with that AWP, so will alleviate a little bit of pressure here. Utility now being thrown out. And Australis still don't have a set plan of where they want to end. As I mentioned, Zipex still babysitting B, bomb still down towards T-spawn, just combing across the map here with a minute on the clock. And now James, is he going to start searching forward? Because this could unravel the default that's happened so far. Divider Molly, bathroom smoke. 45 seconds now. Still a lot of utility Whoa. left over from VP, and they're heavy rotating B. This is the wrong gamble. Yeah, they've gambled incorrectly. Pulled the lever. Think it might be time to go for a walk. And look, if the bomb goes down on A, they're just going to five-man save. Maybe the Deagles hang around, see if they can grab an exit. I wonder if there's anything that would make Australia second-guess this. Definitely not with that connector, Molly. On towards A they go. 20 seconds left, a free bomb site. We've seen a bit of this throughout. And yeah, VP will just call the save here. And that's the thing with those 50-50 moments, right? You make the call, you know that you're operating at a disadvantage, you take that risk. I like that they're taking the risks now, before it gets too desperate. When we're looking at the 15-13 scoreline and then they gamble stacking like that, we're all going to sit here, scratch our head and go, well, why are you taking that risk this late? They're doing it early, they have a bunch of chances to close this out. Uh, they can still throw in CT side aggression, they can go for a couple of plays. We'll start getting sweaty brows eventually, because Australis, they probably have been in this situation many a time, right? But for VP to be able to convert map number one, in what has been a relatively dominant fashion so far, and considering the flubs of nades that we caught in that first half, couldn't be asking for a better start to the day. Well, end of the day. There it is. Unicorn round, not a single person yeah. goes down. Been a while since we've had one of them. Walking into that wide open site. <laughs> and it's about this point when then Astralis realized as he pre-fired the corner. Ah, oh, no one's home. Okay. Ah. All right, they're saving. Yeah, so about that one. Uh, not one of the most exciting rounds. Maybe if you're an Astralis fan and they're clawing this one back. Saved Eagles again. One have more they, go. Have they dropped the guns across to different players for this one? It's not far from the truth. It sounds you just had an M4 and now he's only got a Deagle. I'm pretty sure it was Buster and Yakinda with the Deagles last round. Definitely can't fault them for putting it on Buster for the B defense. And at this point, They've got early info, early warning system in the form of Jamin Yakinda. Underpass lockdown. Ooh, audio for Buster. He's actually been put in a prime position to punish. How's Glaive's pre-aim on this boost? Ooh, didn't quite manage to knock Buster off, but it wasn't far off. Ooh. Loud, very loud. This could be punishing. Yakinda's watching. being baited in. And the steps are enough to lull device into that gray screen walk. Boosting now is Yakinda surely going to get caught off guard by that if he wants to turn the corner. He does tuck in. He's playing a conservative game here. James gone back to B. Yakinda's the only one here. Oh my lord, he needs at least a, at least a double. They're going to surge forward if they don't check him. He's got the likelihood of this multi kill. Really does increase his magisk, and he does find it. Surely he's paranoid. Oh, oh what an adjustment! Oh, he takes a third. Close the, the ace. I think he might as well. Four down. It is Astralis whimpering out of overpass. VP picked this and prove. Bit of a gap. Sclave oh. digs himself out of trouble, stops the ace. But VP with 20 seconds left, this one is practically a done deal. This quarterfinal is competitive, folks. Astralis versus Vertus Pro, 1-0 to the Polar Bears.